Hello? Good afternoon, colleagues. Hello. I know it's very difficult to have an event during lunchtime, but we promise you a very interesting discussion. So please, if you can bring your lunch and come to hear us, it will be great. We're waiting for you all. Yes, thank you. Manuel, sit. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. Ladies, gentlemen, dear colleagues, friends. It's always very hard, I know, to eat and listen, but we'll try to make it as enjoyable as, as, as possible, not to be boring. So I'd like to welcome you here today uh, hopefully in a very, very interesting discussion. You will love it. It's a uh, decided event during the International Dialogue of Migration. And I think after the very, very interesting sessions that we had in the morning and the opening remarks and the singing, we understood that the IDM this year is about human mobility induced by climate change. This session is called Informing the Future, Understanding Human Mobility in the Context of Disaster, Climate Change, and Environmental Degradation. But also in this session, we're going to introduce something extremely interesting, which is our CLIMB tool. And CLIMB tool is a database compiling over 1,500 1, national policies from more than 172 countries, and it will be all available, and we'll see the animation of it by the end of the opening remarks. I think this discussion is needed now more than ever. Through, during 2022, in Asia Pacific alone, 140 disasters last year happened actually affecting more than 64 million people. 70% of sub-Saharan African countries are highly affected by climate disasters and are among the world's most fragile countries. In Middle East and North Africa, we have seen how Daniel Storm affected Libya, Derna City, which was already suffering from multiple crises, causing increasing in the displacement number, more than 40,000 people being displaced between day and night, plus the children, women, young people, and elderly who lost their lives and lost their homes. I'm happy that we are here today with experts, with member states, with UN family, with civil society, with young people, with leaders, to discuss and share knowledge, experiences, but also commit through your leadership to the human mobility induced by climate change. It's happening now, and when it comes to climate change, everyone is vulnerable. Please allow me to introduce our um, uh, uh, colleagues, the panelists here, that are going to give us the opening remarks before we go to the extended session. Let me start by my colleague, Jonathan Prentice, he's the head of the Secretariat of UN Network on Migration. I think we all heard about the GCM, and he's the lead of the GCM. So please, Jonathan, we'd love to hear from you. This one is working. I can hear this one is working. Thank you very much, Rania. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here at the opening of this uh, panel discussion, to welcome you today as we launch 
as Rania was saying, the CLIMB database, a policy vehicle for better understanding human mobility in the context of climate change and environmental degradation. My particular thanks at the outset, if I may, go to those colleagues at IOM and the Platform for Disaster Displacement who led the work in developing this database on behalf of the Network on Migration. CLIM contains a numerous multitude of national, bilateral, and regional policy instruments with relevance to human mobility in the context of di disasters, the adverse effects of climate change, and environmental degradation across at least 170 countries. This, I think, is reflective of two important points of observation. Firstly, that human mobility as related to climate disasters and the environment is of relevance everywhere. It cannot be seen as a faraway problem. It cannot be pigeonholed to one region or sub-region. And secondly, and following on from that, the Global Compact on Migration's focus on partnership and cooperation becomes ever more salient. I think that while my first point will be captured in my colleagues' presentations on CLIMB, I wanted to use these very brief opening remarks to reiterate that call for partnership, supported by the network, where we can pool our collective expertise to help develop effective responses for all impacted communities. As we know, the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration recognizes the devastating intersection of climate change and human mobility, and the urgent need for greater cooperation amongst states, the UN system, and stakeholders to help affected lives. Last year, at the first International Migration Review Forum to assess progress in delivering on the commitments of the Global Compact, this urgency was reinforced with the call to establish more safe, orderly, and regular pathways for those most affected by these phenomena. And it will be important that this call be further advanced in the run-up to next year's regional reviews. The compact, the progress declaration, the assessments that we make on delivering on the compact have no meaning unless we can see progress on the ground. The network's focus will increasingly prioritize climate change and human mobility. We have been pleased in this regard to see the Migration Multi-Partner Trust Fund Steering Committee identify this topic as a priority and that the fund is turning this call into action by supporting responses through joint programs in regions such as the Horn of Africa uh, and the Pacific, as well as most recently in Brazil and in India, focusing on knowledge gaps, safe migration frameworks, climate resilience strategies, and addressing health challenges. We also note with interest that discussions on elaborating a proposed limited set of indicators for the GCM have also touched on climate change as important for monitoring progress. Today, we continue this work. CLIMB is an important tool to help us realize the importance of policy coherence across this dimension of human mobility. As it will be regularly updated, it will help us learn from each other. By collaborating, by sharing knowledge, we can pave the way for a more sustainable, resilient, and equitable future. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you for referring for IMRF and our commitment that has been presented in an important policy document and will also influence the different national plans in every country, in every continent. Thank you so much for that. Now, please allow me to introduce his Excellency, Mr. Emmanuel Antawi, Permanent Representative of Ghana to the United Nations Office at Geneva. Please. Thank you, thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you at this event to launch uh, 
client database. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start by congratulating the UN Network on Migration, the Platform on Disaster Displacement, the International Organization for Migration, all donors, partners, and experts for advancing our, ad our understanding and our joint vision that migration policies and practices are part of the solutions. Solutions that can address the challenges as much as seize the opportunities posed by environmental and climate change to human mobility. It is remarkable to note that 932 national instruments in 171 countries have been identified, combed, processed, analyzed, and shared. Indeed, significant amount of work and knowledge has been gathered in the CLIMB database that we are launching today. The database is an innovative and valuable tool for policymakers and all those who work on human mobility in the context of disasters, climate change, and environmental degradation. <clears throat> it provides an analytical framework with indicators which can be used for future monitoring and review efforts from a migration governance perspective. Good migration policy, good migration policy is concrete. It is not an abstract concept. We can all benefit from practice, practice sharing. I would like to provide three further insights for the opening of this event. Firstly, the work we present today is valuable in terms of advancing the implementation of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration. I am honored to represent my country's engagement on advancing the implementation of the GCM. Ghana is one of the six African and three ECOWAS countries that have volunteered to be champion countries of the GCM Voluntary National Report. The report recognizes that all well-managed migration is widely perceived as an engine of economic growth, innovation, and sustainable development. It states that the GCM implementation in Ghana can be decoupled from existing national migration management processes and programs rooted in the national migration policy and in Ghana's commitments under the SDGs. Secondly, the CLIMB database is new, but it builds on long-term investments to bring the environmental dimensions of migration to the forefront of policy agendas, in particular through the advocacy of climate vulnerable countries. I am equally honored to speak today on behalf of Ghana in its presidency capacity of the Climate Vulnerable Forum and the Vulnerable 20 Group, the CVF and V20. The CVF is an international forum for countries most threatened by climate change, representing 1.5 billion people worldwide but responsible for only 5% of global emissions. In May 2022, at the International Migration Review Forum in New York, Bangladesh, Bangladesh submitted on behalf of CVF a pledge regarding the implementation of the GCM. Under the leadership of Ghana, the CVF implements the pledge through the initiative Migrants for Change in partnership with IOM. Thirdly, I would like to conclude on the relevance and timeliness of the CLIMB database from the perspective of climate vulnerable countries. CVF member states are committed to sharing their trajectories from vulnerability to prosperity. To do so, the impacts of climate change on human mobility cannot be ignored, while the contributions of migrants and diasporans to climate action The database shows that practices are mainly focused on addressing the adverse environmental drivers. On CVF's side, the climate prosperity plans correspond to this vision as CPPs aim to support efforts in mainstreaming climate action 
with a focus on adaptation and resilience in economic and financial planning. CVF collaborates with IOM and PDD to integrate human mobility in the CPPs. Most importantly, the added value of the database is to emphasize that, is to emphasize what is still missing and where we need accelerated action. And these are the development of legal pathways in response to disaster, climate change, and environmental degre degradation. We need to support the multiple contributions that migrants and diasporas make to climate action. In this regard, I am honored to lead the jury of the Migrants for Climate Award in collaboration with IOM and the Global Forum on Migration and Development. I invite everyone to follow us in the coming weeks as we will share inspiring M4C initiatives. To conclude, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we need to remind ourselves that three decades have now passed since the publishing of the first IOM report on environmental migration in 1992. 15 years since the first IOM international dialogue on migration on this topic, and five years since the adoption of the GCM in 2018. Climate change is not pausing, so we need to accelerate our efforts wherever we have an opportunity to act. I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Emmanuel, for the great insights. And congratulations to Ghana for the great work they've been doing. And on our road to COP28, I think that Ghana experience, along with other countries that have been hand in hand working with different UN agencies, with IOM, with communities, this experience has to show results in COP28 to take it forward and be great examples to other countries. So thank you so much for sharing the insight. And we're looking forward. We'll be waiting to see the upcoming uh, inspiring initiatives from Ghana. Thank you for that. Um, please, a big applause to our uh, two guests who gave a great opening remarks to inspire the upcoming discussion. Thank you so much for, for your intervention. Now let me call Manuel, my colleague, to start the moderation for the coming session. But before that, we promised a very interesting uh, animation on climb. So it's coming now, so you can enjoy your lunch and you can see the animation. Please. Every year, our world faces unprecedented challenges due to disasters, climate change, and environmental degradation. Millions are compelled to move due to sudden onset disasters, while the livelihoods of millions more are affected by slow onset climate change, with many leaving their homes and others remaining trapped in areas at risk. When people can move safely, orderly and regularly, communities flourish. Many governments and partners are working together to address these challenges. For the first time, a database collects these efforts and makes them accessible to all. This comprehensive database compiles policy and legal instruments and practices informing future priority actions in policymaking and research. Join us in making this database dynamic and truly useful, and in shaping a sustainable future where human mobility meets climate change head on. Be part of the solution. Good afternoon, all. I hope that you can hear me. It's a pleasure being here today in such an exciting and dynamic event, even if after lunch. Uh, it's my pleasure to thank Rania, Mr. Jonathan, the ambassador, for the first part um, of this uh, side event. Uh, I would like to start by saying a few housekeeping notes so that we are all... Um, we will today launch the 
CLIMB database. This will be around uh, a one-hour discussion. I would like to also remind all that there is simultaneous translation in Spanish, French, and English online and also on the room. It is a pleasure once again to be here um, with, you, with you all. Um, I would like to start by, by saying that today we will have a very relevant panel of politicians, practitioners, and colleagues that work on this thematic with us. We will ask them a few questions, but we will also have a presentation on what the technical work on CLIMB is, because I think it's very enriching to understand a bit more of the technical dynamics uh, of this process. Um, and, and as such, I would also like to remind all that there is a reason why we are here. There are key data points and key information that we all need to retain in our days. Climate change and human mobility is the defining issue of our times. We are in an era that that is evident. And IOM has been on the forefront of these discussions and on the forefront of opening the path for today, that topic being central stage of the IDM, as has we done in the past. Um, as DG Amy has uh, mentioned on the beginning, disasters are on the rise. Our partners at UNDRR and others continue to point to the appalling reality of disaster displacement. No one should be displaced. We have to change and work to make sure that people are safe, empowered and informed to make decisions about their mobility. Today, this side event allows us to bring better understanding to that context, to bring better understanding on the efforts of having enough data to make informed decisions, a key principle of what the future will be on hard decisions and policy decisions, many of them for the day after, not for the present, despite the impacts that we see already on the present. I would like to highlight that this online and living database has more than 1,578 national policy instruments from 172 countries and 230 bilateral or regional policy instruments. This is a tool and a repository of knowledge, of tools that we can use to make the difference in the lives of many people. And you will hear from the experts today that process of creating the database is utility, and we hope that this can spark interest, not only to use it, but also to contribute to it. It's supposed to be live, it's supposed to grow, it's supposed to unite us on the purpose and the objectives that brought us here today. The complex and multi-casual nature of population movements in the context of disasters and the adverse effects of climate change and environmental degradation are evident across these databases. The database looks at policy and legal instruments, but also on practices from a different range of fields, including human mobility, disaster risk management, climate change action, and sustainable development. It shows the need and the progress made on policy coherence to integrate migration in environmental policy and vice versa, but also to integrate environmental considerations on migration policy. Before I open the floor to this fruitful discussion, I would invite two of our distinguished panelists to speak to the present key findings and to give also a short demonstration on the CLIMB database. I would like to invite, my pleasure to invite, first of all, Mr. Atlas Solberg, the head of the Secretariat at the Platform of Disaster Displacement, to present the key insights from the analysis developed based on the data combined in the CLIMB database. Atle, our colleague, our friend, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Manuel. Uh, you can hear me, I can hear. So thank you so much and good afternoon to everyone. I think I need to congratulate IOM for choosing the topic of today. That's, that's a great initiative and, and, and your leadership on this is, is very appreciated. Also, uh, thanking the UN Migration Network uh, for the partnership you are having on uh, the CLIMB database and uh, the, the government of Germany, uh, the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation or Economic Development and Cooperation and GSZ for, for financing some of our work. 
I work for the Secretariat of the PDD, and I'm very honored to also be in the same panel as our chair, the European Union, and our previous chair, uh, the government of, of Fiji. So what I've been asked to, um, to do is to, to say a few words on the background for the CLIMB database. And, um, and Carrie Lynn uh, will go more into the details of what the database can, can offer. I want to see a few words on the background that for the platform on disaster displacement to support this database, it's fundamentally about our support for the implementation of the global compact for migration. And we've already heard today that there are two key objectives. One on addressing the drivers and the structural factors that compel people to move or to compel them to leave the countries of origin. And the compact explicitly lists disasters, climate change, and environmental degradation as part of those drivers that we need to address. The Global Compact also speaks in Objective 5 about creation of flexible pathway for safe, regular migration. We have also heard about that today already, how important it is that when people are compelled to move and there are no more other options left, that their movement is safe. We are very honored as the platform on disaster displacement to be mentioned in objective two of the Global Compact. And as long as we stay in that text, uh, we will be around supporting the implementation. The database uh, we um, are seeing today was part of a larger joint efforts with IOM, with support from Germany and with partners in preparation for the International Migration Review Forum in May 2022. What we wanted to do was to support states to have a tool so they could better do a review of implementation of the Global Compact. And in particular, the two objectives I already mentioned. Objective two, about addressing drivers. Objective five, about uh, pathways. So we developed an analytical framework which brings in a few indicators that states and others can use to see to what extent some of the policy instruments recommended in the Global Compact have been, um, been implemented. We also developed a database of policy instruments as they have been developed uh, at, uh, at the national level and also to a smaller de degree at the regional level. And finally, the project involved a mapping report, an analytical analysis of the state of the art and the policy landscape in terms of um, implementation. We have a few slides that um, I will go through. Um, and um, before I do that, I, I wanted to stress what we have already heard about you today. And I think you, um, you mentioned it, Manuel, about policy coherence. The discussion we are having today is also standing on the shoulders of other global policy commitment. And I've heard that already in 2010, the parties to the Climate Change Convention recognized the link between climate change, migration, displacement, and planned relocation. And we heard in the previous panel that this has been an increasingly, uh, or there has been increased attention to the challenges of human mobility related to climate change under the Climate Change Convention negotiation. We have a key opportunity in the next conference of the parties to ensure more funding in order to avert, minimize, address displacement. Another policy framework is the SENDA framework for disaster risk reduction. That's also a global tool that we need to turn to to see to what extent we can support its implementation. We have uh, the Global Compact for Migration in 2018 and also uh, the twin document, which is the Global Compact on Refugees. These are important tools we have to turn to when we seek to implement measures that can avert, minimize, and address the challenges of human mobility in the context of the adverse effect of climate change. So this suggests that there are challenges in terms of policy coherence, how we bring these global policies together. It suggests very strongly it will all have to be based on partnership whole of government and whole of society, uh, um, whole of society approaches. And there is a strong challenge related to coordination of these measures. So I just wanted to stress the point that we are here today, standing on the shoulders of a variety of other policy instruments and global um, commitments. 
I will now quickly walk you through five key findings from the analysis we did in the, in, the, in, the, in the context of presenting to the International Migration Review Forum last year and what's in the CLIMB the CLIM database as it is today. So the first is that policy development, and we're talking about policy development that are related to making sure that human mobility are part of disaster risk management efforts, climate change adaptation, and resilience uh, effort. And we're talking about policy instruments that are migration governance related, but that they recognize the challenges of, um, of, of the adverse effect of climate change. So we can see of all these instruments we have identified that there is policy development across all regions. But there are certain regions where we have seen more proliferation and more enactment of laws, policy, and strategies. And Africa and the Americas stand out as regions where there has been uh, significant development in these areas, standing on the shoulders of some of the policy instruments uh, I, I mentioned. These are numerical numbers, so that means a region like the Pacific may not come out too clearly, but we will hear from our colleague from Fiji that there are significant and concrete national law that speaks to these issues, for example, in the country of, of Fiji. So, happy to announce there are policy development that we can work on at the national level. That is one finding from the, uh, from the uh, mapping and from the climate database. The second fi finding is that policy development is more relating on addressing drivers, those recommendations we find in objective two of the global compact rather than on facilitating human mobility and speaking to um, migration governance. So that means that there are probably, or there is likely, uh, and that is the finding of the, um, of, the, of the database, that we need more development related to bringing climate change, environmental degradation, and the challenges of disaster into migration governance that at the end of the day will be necessary to make sure that, say, that mobility is safe, regular, and orderly. And you can see high number of climate change policy instruments that speak to the challenges of human mobility, which is great uh, achievement. And probably a reflection that uh, under the Framework Convention on Climate Change, older than 2010, this challenge was um, recognized. The third finding from this um, uh, mapping and the database is that regional priorities set the tone for policy development. And I think this is quite simple. It is the type of hazards, is the type of context and regional or national solution that will drive policy development. So there are different needs depending on whether hazards are more sudden onset or seasonally oriented or whether we are talking about fundamental long-term challenges, for example, related to sea level rise. So across the database, you can see that regions have specific priority setting the tone for policy uh, development. The fourth, the fourth uh, finding from the database is that there is a growing number of policy instruments and tools being developed, but then, of course, the implementation is what is remaining. So this database does not really speak much to what extent these instruments have been implemented, what has been their efficiency and effectiveness, but they are there and there are tools to be used moving uh, forwards. And my fifth um, finding from the, um, uh, from the database and our analysis, uh, there is still huge potential and scope to work harder on cross-cutting issues related to human rights and gen gender and also whole of government approach. So this is Manuel uh, snapshot of what's in the database. We need to work on the database to add more policy instruments, continue the analysis, and I'm inviting governments to see this database, the analytical framework that has been developed to support it as a tool to assess capacity and as a tool to set priorities going forward. Because as we have heard today, it's time to act and that time is today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Atle, um, and, and I would invite all present to 
be part of this call of action, bring these policies forward, let's work together, which is the essence of these two days, a dialogue to create new bridges, new partnerships to take this forward. And as such, I would like to give the floor to Ms. Caroline Mays, the Senior Knowledge Management Coordinator at IOM Global Migration Data Analysis Center. She will provide us with a step-by-step -step demonstration on the database functionalities, interface, and innovative features so that we all live here with a bit more understanding on how we can operate the database too. Thank you. Caroline, your, your word. Thank you very much, Manuel, for uh, the introduction, and it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, as Manuel mentioned, my name is Carrie Lynn Mays. I lead the Knowledge Coordination Unit at uh, the Global Migration Data Analysis Center, which is based in Berlin. And it's there that we work hand-in-hand -hand with the Network Secretariat to um, develop uh, and run the Migration Network Hub, which I'll tell you a little bit more about, as that's what's hosting this CLIMB database. And so we are waiting for the there we go, to come up. And um, as, a, as we begin, so what my role is going to be is to uh, present to you how to find the, the database and how to navigate once you are in the, da the, the, the database. And so what you can see now is that it's based on the UN uh, Network on Migration's general website. You can find it there. Um, and you can also find it in many different access points uh, within the that's landing page right now because we really want to promote it. Um, and so I'll be walking you through it in, in just a moment. Uh, one of the things I just really wanted to say though is that this, uh, the development of this database has really just been a fantastic example of putting knowledge into action. So having it based uh, from the work that the, net, the, the network work stream had been doing that was led by PDD and IOM to map all of these policies, the purpose of this database is to be able to visualize what is the, the outcomes that Adley was talking about. And from that, we have knowledge. And knowledge, when it's shared, that's how we create impact. And so it really has been an exciting opportunity uh, and uh, initiative to be working hand in hand with, the, with the, the colleagues to be able to develop this. And we're really proud about what this uh, page is going to be able to do. And of course, just absolutely honored to be able to host it on the, the network uh, website and as well on the Migration Network Hub. And um, before I begin, I also just want to make sure that I make a few points. I have a tendency to run along in, in, in conversation and forget things. So before I, before I move on, I do just want to say that uh, the team has also emphasized that this is a, a very much a living database. And so it is exhaustive from the mapping that has been done, but it is not necessarily fully exhaustive of all possible policy instruments out there. We do want to be able to hear from, uh, from anyone who might see a gap or might see something that does need to be added. It, I'll provide you with the contact information so that you can upload things. And this database in general, it is alive. And so it will continuously be updated and maintained uh, so that you're able to access the, the information uh, easily and, uh, and accessibly. Um, and I also just wanted to add that uh, we're launching the database today, uh, but also, Whenever you put any sort of uh, website live, there's always moments of tweaks that have you suddenly discover things that need to be fixed. And so we are using this opportunity as well to be able to uh, incorporate any sort of additional changes that might have to be made in time for the COP uh, held in November so that we can also very much showcase this database at the COP and, uh, and about the human mobility context uh, in climate change. And so just to, to note as well, in terms of feedback, if you have any comments on the database in the, in the coming days, then please tell us, and we will be happy to uh, update that as well. Um, and it's also been updated for mobiles, and so you're welcome to look at this on your mobiles even as we, as we speak. Um, so now just to talk about how to find it. So as I said, on this page, on the network website page, you can find it easily. Um, as time goes and more content gets added, of course, this will be, um, you know, there'll be other things that will be promoted, but it'll always be found on the Migration Network Hub. And so what you can see uh, in the tab, and I think Lulia, she's over there, she's maneuvering the mouse, and so I, I apologize. <laughs> My hand is naturally doing all of this. Um, so we're in the Migration Network Hub page. Um, and what you can see, and if you don't mind, Lulia, just scrolling down a little bit, so the Migration Network Hub is itself uh, 
a very important um, manifestation of uh, an enactment of the GCM itself. So the GCM did call for uh, the implementation of a knowledge platform and a connection hub uh, within the GCM in paragraph 43. And so this has been uh, merged somewhat together to be known as the Migration Network Hub. And this is where it really is that the main external knowledge management tool for the network on migration, on everything to do with the GCM. All the content is curated and, uh, and organized in, in relation to the 23 objectives of the GCM, and all kinds of tools can be found here, such as the CLIMB database. So if you can just scroll up a little bit, if you don't mind, Lulia. Upwards. Thank you. And so what we'll do now is we'll go into the CLIMB database, so you can come in from here. You can also come in, if you scroll over the top of the tab there, uh, below, there you go. It's also found in the main navigation plane as well, so you can easily find it and access it. Once you're on the page, we have intentionally just kept this a very simple page, easy to navigate, um, and it is, uh, yeah, so it does, as you can see in the outline, it gives a brief summary of what is there, and then it gives an overview of the, as Adley had mentioned, uh, over 1,573, I think, uh, different policy instruments, national instruments in 172 countries. And you can see right there that in the database they are organized by these different topics of human mobility, disaster, climate change, sustainable development, and other thematic areas. You can see how many policies are in the database for these specific themes. Each one of the policies has been tagged according to its main subject area. So this way you can see which uh, is of relevance, and you can also then do searches where we combine certain ones together. If you don't mind uh, scrolling down just a little bit, Lulia. So what we see here is a, um, the overall uh, just easy to view dashboard of um, the different content that you can find in a summary. So what, was, uh, what Lulia just clicked there is that you can go from the globe view if you want, or you can go to the map view just because it's, uh, it, it's fun. But I'll keep it on the map view just to keep everything simple. Now what you can see now is, for instance, if you were to click on human mobility, what you will see is on the right hand side, you will see the number of uh, policies that are in the database specific to human mobility, and you'll also see the countries that have the most going down in terms of uh, policies available on that particular topic. And so right now you'll see that's Ethiopia, Somalia in terms of human, human mobility, Albania. And now we could also click, shall we say, on disaster. And so what we're seeing now is that they have both human mobility and on disaster. And you can also again see the countries which have the, um, the, the number of uh, policies and you can get a quick view in terms of how many they have. And at the on the bottom there, when you're clicking on the country, what you're seeing is there's dates in a bar graph, and that's showing you within the country uh, when they developed their, their different policies and how many policies that they've developed over the years. So you can see just kind of a, a chronology of growth. If you'd like to view by region, you can go to the left-hand side and you can click on, for instance, Africa, and you will see the countries that have the, um, actually, yeah, if you could just reset because it's now on human mobility and disaster. No, stay where you are. Uh, just go to the reset button. Uh, there, perfect. So reset your search because right now it's only looking at human mobility and disaster. So now you can go to Africa. All right, there's a reset that I'll just have to get arranged in there. Enter. No, just uh, go up, go up, go up. Sorry, right there. Sure. Um, so if you go on to, yes, Africa. Yes. You will see all of the different countries within the region, and you'll be able to see the breakdown in terms of the policies that are available. Same for the Americas. If you click on that, you'd be able to see, again, if you unclick Africa. There you go. And then you can see for the Americas, and it'll give you the list down again in terms on the right-hand side of the, different, the number of policies for the different countries. And then from here, you could do an advanced search, but I'll go to that in a, in a little bit. If you don't mind scrolling down just a little bit more. 
And so what you will see here is just the bar graph that uh, Adley has already provided, which is showing you the overall breakdown in terms of the different uh, policies by topic over the years, and that you can just certainly see the, the, the growth in terms of policy development over the last, uh, the last several years, meaning, of course, policy development is, is, is one part of, the, of tackling an issue, implementation, of course, being the, being the next. Uh, if you can go down now just to, to regions, so if you wanted to just see, just from an analytical perspective, we'll give you a summary in terms of by region, you can see the different, um, the, the different uh, breakdown of uh, the policy instruments and as well by thematic area, region specific priority, and uh, GCM actions and uh, objectives so that you can see the breakdown in terms of uh, the various breakdowns within the GCM. So from here, you can go to actually exploring the database itself. Uh, and so what we have as we come up here is, again, you have the total number on the right-hand side, and you can do the, the various filtering. But what this gives you is the actual opportunity to now go into the various policy instruments if you want to read specifically. And so you can also do your, your search by any number of these. You can go by year if you like, just by moving the, the cursor over, um, the, the, the circle over at the end, all good. <laughs> and um, then if you go scrolling right down, I mean, for instance, we'll just take a, an example of the, the Philippines, for instance, um, as they have a, an excellent uh, policy that was, uh, I think, discussed earlier. If we'll go to, there we go, down to Philippines. And so what will happen there is you'll see all the different policy instruments that are available, uh, developed by, by, the, uh, by the Philippines. And so you do see that there are certain markers that are there, and so that's simply to indicate which ones are specifically time-bound and which ones are currently being implemented. Um, if you would like to actually read the, the policy instrument, you just need to go to the, to the link, and then you can click. And you can see just an overall summary, access the publication itself, or scroll down and you can find additional information that will tell you, including about the markers. Can you just scroll up a little bit before we go into there? I'll show you the markers for in terms of a child marker, gender marker, and a specific relevant GCM objectives. So that way it's looking specifically at the policy from the GCM lens, as well in terms of other priority areas as well. And it gives a certain uh, grading in terms of explanation as to, to what extent does this policy go into these, these specific areas. And then of course, at the bottom you see kind of the, the extracts from the policy itself that are relevant to climate change, human mobility, and uh, just to give you a, a nice sampling of what to find and where to find it. So we can just go back up, and so this has opened a different uh, link, so you can just go back to the page, and that brings you here. Now, earlier on the main landing page, you had the option to see about, um, and then as well from here, you can also see about, I have the Canadian accent, I heard it when I said it. Uh, if you can click the, the about, and there we go. And now this is going to give you a full overview in terms of uh, what was the methodology in the first place for the, the network to be able to do the research and to do the mapping. You will also find sources and limitations and the definitions that are being used and frequently asked questions. And if you can scroll down just a little bit, you can just see the explanation as well in terms of uh, how the, the, the different markers are being used and assigned, the way that the instruments were selected, and, uh, and keep on going down and just kind of what the database does and what it does not so that we manage our expectations. And then uh, you can keep on scrolling down and just get a better understanding of the, the overall view of, um, of the content of the, the database. And again, at the very, very bottom, you'll find frequently asked questions. So I hope I've been Thank within you, my Caroline. time. <laughs> and, uh, and, and yeah, no, we're really excited about this and uh, very, very happy to have it hosted and I really, do implore you all to check out the database as well as check out the Migration Network Hub more broadly if you're not familiar with it. Uh, you don't have to be a registered account user. You can look at this publicly, but if you'd like to register an account to, uh, to work within the hub and to be able to upload documents yourself, then we'll give you that as well. Thank you. Over. Um, very good to hear these details, and I think this is a very good segue to our next conversation. I am very uh, honored to be able to introduce the panelists and the people we, we also want to hear from. Um, but allow me to say before that our 
colleague from GIZ, Ms. Kathleen Schmidt, the advisor on climate services and human mobility, unfortunately is not able to join us to further diversify and strengthen this panel. She was unable to make to Geneva. She's with us in spirit and I hopeful online, uh, but I would uh, take this moment to thank our panelists for being here, Caroline Atle, and to welcome uh, the next panelists. Allow me to introduce to you Mr. Eduardo José A. de Vega, the Undersecretary for Migrant Worker Affairs from the Department of Foreign Affairs in the Philippines. Thank you, sir, for being here. Es un placer. Um, I would like to also uh, welcome Mr. Anara Lequinila, the Deputy Permanent Representative of the Permanent Mission of Fiji to Geneva, Anare, a friend and a colleague, a pleasure, and Ms. Susanna Smeden Stopa, the Counselor for Humanitarian Affairs and Migration with a focus on climate change of the Permanent Delegation of the EU to Geneva. It is a pleasure having the three of you here. A round of applause for them. We need to energize a bit this room. <laughs> um, I would want first to ask a small comment around the CLIMB database because I think this is an excellent segue on how research policy then inform the actions and the decisions of, of government. And so, dear panelists, my question to you, and we will turn two or three minutes to your reflections on these, would be how do you see the CLIMB database adding value within your work and the work of your governments, and how would you suggest that its collection of laws and policies could also be leveraged for wider use by decision makers, researchers, and other stakeholders? I would ask first uh, Mr. José Vega. Uh, two minutes. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, first, uh, thank you to the organizers, and thank you for yourselves, to yourselves for being here. Uh, because we're discussing a database. I'm sure after the morning session, the only data you were interested in was the sandwiches. <laughs> the data on the sandwiches. And the only side, side event is side dishes for the food. But now you're listening to us. So thank you. Well, how do you, uh, how does it uh, increase the value? Well, of course, uh, it's a contribution to getting the data to prove the link between human mobility, climate change, and environmental degradation. And because you, in this beautiful uh, database, you can see data from other countries. So we, each of us countries, whether we are migrant sending or migrant receiving, has things to share, but also many things to learn. So we thank you for using, showing the Philippines advancement in our uh, uh, development uh, policy creation about disaster risk reduction, displacement response, and we could certainly share them with the world. You could see also our focus on inclusion, on the rights and welfare of groups in vulnerable situations. So th that's one. We can learn from the best practices of other countries through a database like this. We could see where we are deficient, like I saw Asia and Oceania. Uh, we don't have, uh, as compared to Africa and Europe, I'm sorry, Africa and the Americas, America. the, the development uh, 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 policy uh, uh, identification or creation and so forth. So, uh, that's one. One suggestion, uh, I know it's going to be enormous work. Uh, I suppose this is in only in the official languages of the United Nations, but maybe uh, among the local stakeholders in each country, they could make uh, translation to the local languages to make it reach more people. Of course, it's going to be vast amount of work, but uh, at least uh, make it more clim uh, not climate friendly, uh, user friendly. Uh, but it's fantastic, and we truly appreciate it. Obrigado. Thank you, Thanks. sir. Um, yes. oh. <laughs> A round of applause. <laughs> we need to also recognize the, the importance of, the, of these words. Um, Anare, from your point of view, the Pacifics, we all know the challenge, we all know the importance of policy support in all of the most vulnerable countries, but this is critical and life-threatening uh, situations to you. How do you see that this sharing of information could be used better? Thank you, Manuela. Uh, I think from, uh, from the, the Pacific, I think uh, we just wanted to touch on what Ed Lem mentioned is on the policy coherence. I think when we look at uh, the database, we look at uh, the different areas that is being covered, we all understand that at the national level, we are a bit siloed on our, on our application of the documents or the instruments against 
the global frameworks. I think with the database and with the analysis that has been undertaken, I think it gives us good ground to look at policy coherence at the national level. For those of us that develop national plans for implementation and to look at how government approaches the issue of human mobility, I think in looking a bit broadly under the various issues like climate change, human mobility, disasters, and look at how we can coherently bring that into our national plans for implementation for those agencies that work on the topic of human mobility. I think that database provides us good ground. It has shown us the landscape of how the instrument aligned with the GCM and how it aligns with other global conventions. And we have seen what are the gaps, as we have noted that while we have been addressing root causes, we are lacking in implementation. I think the, that kind of guidance, that overall view of the landscape of the documents and how we can apply that at the national level, especially for us in the Pacific where a lot of these issues are happening and how we can look at it coherently and to implement it coherently, I think that is one of the value of the database as we see and it's been presented today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anare. I don't Thank you so much. Uh, I would also, well, thank you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I, I would ask the same from Susanna in, in, in representation of the EU and having understood all, all of us have seen the fires and the floods this year, which is a different dimension and sometimes we don't see how climate impacts that. How do you see vis-a-vis -vis these realities on Europe? Uh, the questions raised by the existence of the database and how can we make this database stronger and useful for the countries of the EU and others? Um, thank you very much, Manuel, for your question and uh, thank you all the panelists uh, uh, for uh, providing very valuable insights. Of course, coming from Europe, we have a completely different outlook and, and uh, like uh, our um, in the keynote speech, uh, there was uh, we are not afraid to uh, die in our beds uh, and drown in our beds. Uh, but and this is, has not come yet uh, there. But uh, we see, of course, the value of uh, the database, and uh, we are more than honored and uh, glad to see this. Uh, launch of CLIMB database uh, during uh, our chairpersonship of platform on disaster displacement. Uh, from the database as it was presented uh, now, uh, it, uh, it's the surface, of course, when we drew, go inside and, and it's uh, much more in depth, uh, we can see that, that quality data which is gathered here and, and the amount of data which is gathered here surpasses the objective that it had for the, in the first place uh, being uh, the GCM uh, baseline mapping project and uh, we are glad that uh, it uh, went uh, further and um, as uh, EU, uh, one of the main donors in, uh, collect in data collection globally, our uh, overall objective of chairing of platform on disaster displacement was, had been to facilitate exchange of knowledge including data collection and analysis, and, but at the same time uh, for us it's using these data to strengthen capacities at the national and regional levels to implement effective practices and policy instruments that can avert, minimize and address disaster displacement. Um, when we talk about benefits, we say that we think it's understanding the connection between climate uh, change and uh, human mobility and how it is translated in policies uh, and instruments. On the second, we would say that um, policy, it uh, really impacts policy, uh, formulation and refinement because it gives us access to diverse range of policies and legal instruments that can in turn inform EU strategies uh, on addressing uh, human mobility uh, relating to climate uh, uh, adaptation, uh, disaster risk reduction and humanitarian assistance of course. And thirdly, is, uh, it definitely facilitates data-driven decision-making uh, in an era where uh, evidence-based policy is paramount. 
the information housed in the database offers a robust foundation for our policy making processes. I think in overall I we will, we will continue on more details because I still have one more round of questions, but a round of applause for Susanna um, for, for also joining here uh, today. I have one final round of questions. Of course, this is a dialogue we don't want <laughs> to extend us uh, into uh, excessive details, but I think it's important, these different dimensions, this dialogue between member states, practitioners, and the affected communities, one of the richnesses of IOM being a leading agency on this discussion and being able to create this convening space. So I would go back to Mr. Eduardo de Vega and ask him, um, can you share with us from your perspective on the role of data and evidence and how that has played a role in shaping Philippines policies to protect the well-being of migrant workers affected by climate change? The floor is yours, sir. Actually, uh, to be brief, uh, I remember the mayor of uh, Santiago earlier saying that when they looked at migration, uh, there was still a lack of... Uh, uh, connection in their mentality between migration and, and human mobility. And in the Philippines case, normally, and we saw it in what was shown earlier in the database that in Asia, the first uh, priority is protection of workers. We just look at migrant workers as uh, motivated by economic uh, reasons. But now, because we are more interested in getting more complete, more accurate data, uh, we have passed uh, recent laws uh, in order for the data regarding uh, our migration to be more complete, more uh, desegregated, so that we'll have an idea, not just uh, of where they're going or, or where, where, where they're going and how many they are, but from which parts of the Philippines. In this case, uh, we always, like many archipelagic countries, like many countries in the region, were always affected by natural disasters and, or, or typhoons because of uh, climate change, and we, until recently, we have not linked, uh, we have not had the mentality to think, wait, if, if our migrants are coming from those areas affected by the foods, then they will have different skills from those leaving from urban areas. So we have to have a more accurate basis for that. So it's a work in progress. And for that, again, I repeat that we want to share and also learn from you. Uh, we are planning uh, a mission to African countries uh, and uh, Latin American countries, uh, if not this year, next year, to also share. And this is a great, uh, a great tool for us. So, nevertheless, and that's the one value is we want to uh, uh, collect even more accurate data because we're spending resources on protecting our migrant workers. So it's always good to have it on the basis of real evidence and not just, um, for example, if there is a, uh, there, there was recently a, um, an earthquake in Morocco and uh, we share condolences to the uh, public of Morocco and then somebody announced there were uh, 300 affected Filipinos in this area, but there were not 300, there were less for less. But this is, uh, emphasizes the need for uh, the importance of it. And by the way, we are monitoring, for example, every year, the climate change in Europe, including your country and, uh, and other southern European countries, because we have a lot of Filipinos all over. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you, sir. No, I think that dimension of people being affected away from home and yes. at home creates that space yes. that we are all affected. There's different vulnerabilities, but people across the world in different settings are being affected and mobility is one of the drivers, but one of the solutions. Yes. Um, I, would, I would ask and, and jump a bit of, of the order of the protocol, Susanna, um, in reflecting on the use commitment to address human mobility in disaster and climate change contexts, what possibilities and challenges you see arising to harness data to advance ongoing initiatives and leadership roles in this area? The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, thank you, Manuel. Um, well, we see, of course, there are challenges and there are a plethora of possibilities. Um, in challenges, maybe I would, I would say that um, we have to, uh, re to make database um, comprehensive and current and uh, foster 
uh, continuous collection of quality data uh, in order to uh, to update uh, and and to be a living document that it is already uh, and which we can use uh, later on in developing policies and informed decisions. Um, one another challenge that I see, which is also a possibility, is definitely that uh, dissemination. Uh, of course, you made uh, sure as uh, the creators of database uh, to uh, create the very uh, user-friendly uh, platform that, uh, uh, that we can then disseminate and we have to, this, this is the duty to disseminate it to relevant entities in, our, in the EU for us, uh, in the governments, uh, uh, and uh, also regional, uh, uh, regional and, and um, community uh, entities who can use the data and utilize uh, to the benefit of, of uh, uh, general policies, but also of uh, the people who uh, we serve. Um, with possibilities, uh, well, I would first uh, say that the possibilities uh, here we see it in uh, first and foremost, on, in collaboration, like uh, Philippines said, and, and uh, especially, for example, Philippines with, with uh, uh, multiple, uh, well, I, I'm not going to say even multiple is uh, <laughs> euphemism, experience in, in disasters to, to really reach out to the countries uh, in other regions to uh, assist them and uh, uh, lead by example, and th here we can, uh, uh, the countries like that can can have their own leadership. Us, we can have a leadership, and we want to have a leadership uh, because we we have some means that we can create uh, uh, a strong uh, message uh, in the other part of the world. So, thank you, thank you, Susanna. Thank you very much for this. I. I will turn now to, to Anare, which is a known champion on climate change, on his previous role back in his government, on the <laughs> forefronts of response, and now here in Geneva advancing the importance of this issue and policy and, and politics around how to make uh, our collective safety. Anare, um, the Climate Database demonstrates a lot of good progress in terms of policy development on climate change and human mobility in the Pacific. From your point of view, what lessons do you think other regions could learn from this progress and the many examples covered in the database. The Pacific is a region that has been um, hit significantly and very visibly all over the years. We need to listen to the lessons learned. How do you see us advancing on this regard, my friend? Thank you, Manuel. I think in terms of looking at uh, the region and looking at the, the work of the database, as I've mentioned earlier, we normally do this at, uh, at the country level. But we understand uh, the challenges that we are facing brought about by climate change and in terms of looking at the future of human mobility. In, uh, in, the, in the next month, uh, the Pacific Island Forum leaders will be looking at uh, the, the Pacific's human mobility framework, where we, the, all we, we are presenting it to the leaders to look at how countries can look at some of the things that is contained in the database, look at legislation and policy instrument, looking at our coherence, looking at how we can do partnership at the, at the regional level in terms of looking at the, at the challenges that we are facing. I think in terms of looking at the framework that we are trying to present to leaders and looking at the climate database, you know, they, they go in tandem in terms of looking at, looking at the lessons learned from other regions in the world in terms of institutions, in terms of governance, and looking at what we are doing in the Pacific in terms of the human mobility framework that we are putting in place and how we can improve on implementation of the framework, not only at the regional level, but how it cascades down to the respective countries. I think that is something that we can take in terms of looking at, looking at how we're tackling the issues around climate change as, at, as a regional. And then that is something that when we're looking at the database, we're looking at the experiences across countries, across regions, I think that is something that we can all learn from but also in terms of the Pacific being the first to put in place a framework for human mobility for a region, I think that is something too that countries can learn 
in terms of looking at the database and how we can work on it collectively to ensure that we address human mobility in the respective regions that we serve in. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you so much, Anare, and, and, and to all the, the panelists, that, the five of you that present in different forms. I, before I ask you all to uh, acknowledge the, our panels with a round of applause, I would like to make a final point. The panel today on informing the future looks at data, but I think the point Anare and the rest of the panel has made on the importance of the regional dialogue on creating this cohesive approach to policy, the Pacific Framework, the Kampala Declaration that was discussed today, other efforts that are going in other regions of the world. Um, I wanted to confirm that IOM stands with the member states to develop these frameworks, to develop these policies, to create this global pact on what we want the mobility to be in the future vis-a-vis -vis climate change. So I thank you all, incentivize you to look at the database, join us on this effort, let's unite hands and create this pact. Thank you to the panelists, thank you to you here and online for listening to us. A round of applause to all of us. Muchas gracias. Pues, De nada, placer. Anare. Thank you.